Welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation. It's been away for a while to those who've been viewing Conversation. We've been busy with all kinds of other things, but we're really, really, really pleased to be able to have two dear friends of mine from about a thousand years ago, in my way of thinking <laughs> about important work that they're doing. That's John Drysdale and his lovely bride, Mary Carlin, for crying out loud. <laughs> Friends from about a thousand years ago. Thanks both very much for coming into conversations on this December 12th of the year, the uh, Christian era of 2017. We're going to be talking about a great person of that time, and we're going to take an extended look at things, if we could, in these two programs that we're going to tape. Uh, we're going to be looking at the year 1970 and the, uh, the personages of John McConnell, who was the founder of the Earth uh, Foundation Society, and they've had association with that, and also his representation or re recognition of the important works of some of the major thinkers, whom uh, Margaret Mead and others, including particularly uh, of Buckminster Fuller. Absolutely. And John, Mary, welcome. So very, very much to conversation. Thank Thanks for being here. It's so good <laughs> to see you guys and everything like that. So kick it off. I wonder if you could. Why don't we do a little thing? You give a little description, John. Start with you and just a, a, a born and raised a little bit and background. And you do the same, Mary. Okay. And then uh, to introduce yourself individually. And then we'll go on and talk about uh, the world condition, John McConnell, Buckminster Fuller, and the current situation with the human condition. But, Johnny, you want to uh, just give a little introduction of yourself? Uh, yeah, I was born in Scotland. I came to America in 1960. Uh, oh, I was a corporate type, making lots of money and all the rest of it. And, uh, and then one day I met John McConnell, and that kind of changed my life a bit. Uh -huh. And uh, he introduced me to the UN and got me involved in issues that were non-commercial because before that I was just running Revlon and major corporations and making lots of money and uh, and I keep having a bad dream here lies the body of a lipstick case so anyway John <laughs> changed John changed that and so he introduced me to the UN and I supported him in his endeavors and that, that uh, must have been a big change you know or was it yeah, major a major change, change, yeah. <laughs> major change. <laughs> was it was there a waking all at once or something or how did you no make the I change? just realized I was a whore I was part of the problem part and of the whore uh, did you say is that, yeah it's a word to I said I realized I was a whore I was uh, part of the problem uh, and I wanted to be part of the solution uh -huh. and uh, John had a lot of re really cool stuff to talk about so I kind of followed him around for years and uh -huh. then, uh, you know, kind of uh, helped him out. You mm -hmm. know, he was getting on and uh, helped him put on the event at the UN and, you know, helped build the society into uh, what it is today, which is quite an exciting global event, not just special events, but following a lot of the UN initiatives and trying to do our bit, you know, to uh, save the planet, clean up the planet, and, you know, make it a better world. There you go. Very, very good. good well, <laughs> okay, now how about you, young well, lady? Well, um, I grew up uh, in Wisconsin, northern uh -huh. Wisconsin, on a dairy farm, uh -huh. and so spent a lot of time outdoors. I have a degree in botany from the University of Wisconsin at Madison, uh -huh. and uh, did a lot of traveling uh, in my 20s. And yeah. Met John and ended Where up in New meet? York. Where did you meet? Actually, you out in New Mexico. Can you remember the land moment? of enchantment? Yeah. Can yes. you remember the moment? And the kiss. And the kiss. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. It was magic. So Who, uh, he moved right <laughs> in. Did he with that? Yeah, yeah. And um, mm -hmm. my involvement then also was just to uh, be involved with John McConnell. I yeah. would tag along with him to the UN, and we were in and out of, you know, different uh, press press offices right. and also just. Uh, the different missions, uh -huh. and the idea that he had was to have a holiday or a holy day for planet Earth. And, and it is? It is on the March equinox, which in the northern hemisphere is the first day of spring. Mm -hmm. The original one was held 
March 21, 1970. Mark that well, ladies and gentlemen. The first Earth Day. 1970, the Earth Day. God bless them, and God bless in you March. all for putting that out there. Yeah. Yes. And, and finally, somebody speaks for the ecology. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. And uh, it was first <laughs> announced in 1969 uh, at a UNESCO Man in the Biosphere Conference. Okay. And McConnell got a lot of support from different ambassadors. Uh -huh. So it was basically held in California and internationally. And at that point, uh, a big celebration was planned for April 22nd. They also took the name Earth Day. Uh -huh. uh, but McConnell moved the whole operation to New York uh -huh. and got the support of the UN Secretary General Youth, Youth Hunt. Uh -huh. And he rang the peace bell in 1971 in March on the equinox. Where, where, was there a ceremony in 1970? Uh, in and California. if there was, where was it held? Uh, California University of Davis, uh, San Francisco went all out, and again, whatever individual ambassadors from around there the world. There wasn't a particular place where that took place? California. The 19, no, Same not where the Cal UN started. No, no, the city, the town, the street. San the, Francisco San and the University at Davis. That Northern California. They They're always it. ahead of the curve, <laughs> are they not? All those people up in Berkeley and whatnot? Yeah, God bless them all. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so the main thing is that um, with the support of the United Nations, we have held a event uh, at the moment of the March equinox where we ring the children's peace bell uh -huh. and there it's three times that we ring the bell for peace uh -huh. justice and care of earth and we have now successfully carried that out each year uh, so 48 years we're looking at and congratulations this to year you all. Yeah. we did a live yeah. event from Vienna Really? From the peace bell, the really? sister peace bell, yes. Uh, uh, there's a bell there. Are there other bells around the world oh, sure. that are there? Are there uh, many? Are sure. There many? And in fact, there's a group called the World Peace Association uh, yeah. that they are tracking all the bells around the world. Really? And we're hoping to get a good response for next year because uh, for 2018, it's going to be on Tuesday, March 20, and it'll be at 12.15 p.m. New York time. So for us, but it's, it's a really good time. But it's times all around the I world. I know, yeah. One year, it's at 6.30 in the morning. You really have, one year, have, Sunday have, morning. Do they have designated peace bells all around the world? Sure, that are, For sure. that purpose at various religious locations or churches? Um, yes, or yes. Yeah, yeah. And How many of yeah. them are there? I'm not sure, but the biggest one is in Lexington, Kentucky. Really? And it's huge. You really? Yeah. And so the idea was just to have a shared moment where yeah. it heartfelt. Yes where it's, it, that's what's unique about Earth Day on the equinox. Right, right, That it's right. a shared moment. And really, Earth Day is every day. And yeah. the Earth flag, which McConnell designed, is yeah. the symbol, our unifying symbol for all of us. That makes you think of John Glenn and company, and the well, people going it, to the moon. The it's morning. when yeah. we stepped yeah. away from mm -hmm. Earth that we saw our fragile planet. And yeah. that's in our lifetime. So yeah, it, right. it's really a change in consciousness. I think you're right. And that's something important for humanity to get a sense of. Don't you think that sure. it isn't a normal period? We're in a very uh, extraordinary time of uh, qualitative transformation, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you think that? Sure. And it might have been signaled by 1970, right? Well, the nice thing was that when McConnell started getting support, he had an Earth Charter, yeah, and he had 33 Nobel laureates who signed on, saying this is a great idea, and we That's support it. That's a lot. It. You had Margaret Mead signed on quick, and a this whole lot of people cottoned on, did they not? A whole lot of good people that you'd recognize, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just, you know, it's a, it's a minor celebration, yeah. what we do, but, but it's symbolic and yeah. it's spiritual in nature as well. It is spiritual. Because we have a minute it? of silence, and that's when you, voices don't get involved, but your heart, we know that we're on one planet, one mm. people, please. Would you count yourselves peaceniks? There's a term. Some people say it with this... Uh, uh, I uh, think we need peace, yes. Yeah, I do too, you know. <laughs> all it all that. depends who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't right, feel yeah, peaceful yeah. towards Trump. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> you seem to have an animus toward our... our, our Absolutely, president. I hate yeah. the son of a bitch. Yeah, I think yeah, he's well, a real yeah, well, pain in the ass. Putting it a little, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I... Well, um, if he if I'm he sorry, didn't that's win the how election, I feel. you think he's going to be <laughs> impeached? I uh, hope so. Oh, uh, you do. You think uh, it might be I heading hope so. for that? Did you see today on the television? This is the twelfth, is it, of December? Yeah. Uh, that the mo they have a word uh, uh, that's most often uh, that is sort more than any other word search word on the whole of the internet all over the world. Feminine. Feminism. I think the women are starting to get uh, uppity. Well, not what uppity. We're, we're, we're just yeah. saying we need a balance. Well, oh. today there were six <laughs> women who were coming forward to accuse Trump of, uh, you know, sexual abuse. Yeah. So. Well, 
Maybe that'll help get rid of the bugger. I'll tell you, you one other yeah. thing that was on today's news is it's the anniversary of the Paris Climate Conference, okay. and they have a full day. It's called one. It's called the Planet Summit. Right. And it's very we're exciting. We're showing how. Very exciting. Um, it, okay, if Trump wants to take us out of the Paris Accord, it doesn't matter because there are is a coalition of mayors and governors and um, other U.S. corporations and citizens who are stepping up to the plate to say, no, we want to be in and yeah. we want to continue to make this absolutely. a livable world. And and we do worry about climate change mm -hmm. and, and resources and a sixth extinction that we are in the middle of right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. We have the capacity to destroy our world. And well, wait, wait, no, we I, I, wait a minute. Better, better qualify that. I don't think we have nuclear the capacity. weapons. No, I don't think we have the. Capacity. How about life as we know it? <laughs> oh, well, I think we do, and I think we've agreed in preliminary conversations to our talking right now on this program. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, actual data that demonstrates that the uh, after two hundred thousand years of our existence on this planet as a species, we finally got weapon systems that have a capability, if they were to be unleashed to eliminate the entire Homo sapiens species with uh, modeling that can be modeled correctly and that that is the ontologic reality since about 1970, the year that Mr. O'Connell tried to get something opposite to that going, if I would suggest, if you understand what I mean. But not just humans, but, yeah. you know, the rest well, of the planet. Well, and it's kind of a big thing to think we're going to wipe out two, what do we got, 10, uh, well, maybe we got uh, uh, these billions of people uh, 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 wiping out humanity is rather a large order of uh, magnitude in terms the of Earth evolutionary would change. We know that. Well, it would. You think yeah. it would? Yeah. It would. The chances of it picking up again are practically nil. I think, don't you? Well, I, I just mean, think a lot of uh, most species that have ever been have gone extinct. You understand? We could just join a whole roster of species that have gotten to a certain point and then didn't uh, didn't themselves in ecologically or otherwise. Or maybe we're birthing a new human. And well, there has been five swim. extinctions. Uh, and hey, we're on the border. Uh, we're on the border of the sixth extinction. Well, five uh, great extinctions. Right? Five extinctions in uh -huh. the history of this planet. Yeah. And we're on the border of the six, well, now, wait a minute. Wait which is man-produced. Yeah. Well, what about the others were not. They no. They were produced by an evolutionary process. Well, some of them was a conop in the Yukon Peninsula, smacking thing, calling it global winter. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of different reasons. Yeah. But this one is definitely produced by human activity. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that today's conference in Paris showed is that we really need to go to total renewable energy. And New York could lead the way. We're, we're in a sweet spot for wind energy. We could supply all the, all the energy that needed for the tri-state area with offshore wind. Off yeah, I wonder, I wonder uh, what do you think, John, about that? I'm not so sure. I well, mean, I'll, I'd give, like you, to I'll know give you I'd an example. Austria, yeah. where we have our... Uh, Vienna Peace Bell. Vienna Peace Bell is, is now 100% uh, clean energy. Where, where is that, John? Austria. 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 Uh, the country of Austria. Country of Austria. Really? That's very Wind, sizable. solar. What's that when you use water? Hydroelectric. Yeah, hydroelectric. And, uh, geothermal? Geothermal. No, they don't That's use the geothermal. Bay of so, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But they, 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 it's all clean energy. They're not burning coal yeah. or oil. I love when Trump said the other day, everybody's going, uh, we're going to produce clean coal. <laughs> I've got, I mean, that this guy's in that case. It's, it's like he's crazy. There. Yeah, right, right, right. And the Europeans are are just sort of laughing at us. But what encourages me that all the major corporations that have half a bloody brain, like Apple or the rest of them, and so on, so they're all at this conference in Paris. The but one at the at, moment, as we speak. At the moment, yeah. as we speak. And who uh, else is l worried about it? Is the military? Our U.S. military were early on oh to yeah. say climate change is that was more of a threat than the, terrorism. Yeah, there was a guy called Odo. Odo, I've never heard of Odo. Uh, no, He's Frodo one of the from like, Star Generals. Wars, right? Now Frodo, he you made he, that up. No, no, I didn't. No, that was his nickname. Oh, but he worked at the Pentagon, yeah. and he was at. Uh, he was a threat analysis. He had he analyzed what are the major threats to the security of the United States. And Frodo said, absolutely unequivocally is violent global climate change and the pollution of the atmosphere and the oceans is the major threat. 
worse than war or terrorism or anything. Mm -hmm. So the military is behind it. So we started working with the military, and then uh, a couple of years ago, we got the Navy uh, starting to clean up their act because they're one of the major polluters, you know, with oil fact, and all this kind of stuff. the military is the biggest and environmental polluter. we got a naval base in St. Augustine to uh, go green and clean up their bloody act. And we brought them to the UN for uh, um, the peace bell ceremony. We call it the children's peace bell ceremony. Um, I don't so, quite understand. So you, how you're going to have the military clean up its ecological Clean up their act, yes. 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 How, are yeah. they going to how are they going to power... Well, I, you know, well, they it's, could use it, nuclear energy. There's not they enough. Not? No, they're just there's, there's going not green. Enough, there's not enough time to explain it all. But the point is, they can't go back to sailing. If or? you no, 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 that's not the point. <laughs> the point, you know, it, the, it's it's actions you take in day to day living, even, yeah. even if it's just a household. Yeah, you know, right. there's that's certain true. things you can do that are non polluting. Mm -hmm. The the whole thing is to come. See, the problem is pollution. And if you have solutions to pollution, whether it's in a family mode, one house, or in a naval base, or a, a, a military, that all contributes to solving the problem. Well, that's so a solution step, to pollution. That's right. got a poetic ring to it. Yeah, know? I know, it does. It might pick up I'm as a, poet. a selling Alka-Seltzer or something. You know? I mean, they could do that, you know, so well, you know yeah. what I mean. And, and just to come back to today's conference, yeah. uh, it's being sponsored by France and the World Bank. Uh -huh. So here's your financial institutions also saying, you know what, we want to be in on what's the change that's happening. Right now, there are more people employed in the solar industry than in all of the others. And that is not going to change. That's just going to get stronger. The sun shines every day. That should be our energy source. What do you think, John? Maybe I think I've heard uh, some in our preliminary discussion, um, um, the, uh, the use of... Uh, Atomic energy. I know there was a uh, France had seventy percent of their electricity um, provided by atomic energy, and it's totally clean in terms of in terms of the environment. Well, no, you see, uh, no, no, it's no, not totally okay. clean. No, wait, That's, he asked me a question. I, I, the answer yeah. to the question is as follows. Mm -hmm, all right. Mm -hmm. First of all, you can't be against nuclear energy. The bloody sun is a nuclear reactor. Thank you. And that Without point, the sun, yeah. you have no life. So just start with that. Okay? Yeah, thank you. That is now, a very good now, premise the to begin question with. Is, well, right. The question is what you're concerned with is the byproduct of nuclear energy production. What do you do with the waste? Separate subject. Some people want to fly back into the sun and em emulate it. You know, this, that is a problem. But however, you, it, there's not just one type of uh, nuclear energy. There's a number of types, and mm. they're working towards clean nuclear energy. Well, what's wrong with that? That's a good there's idea. There's nothing wrong with it. I didn't say there's no. anything wrong with it. Have they come to a solution but how to get clean nuclear energy? No, but everything energy. gets mixed up. You say yeah. the word nuclear, and people think bomb. Yeah. Ban the bomb well, of nuclear energy. They've, they've been imbued in, in with that through the recent well, history. I'm just saying you have to yeah. separate the sun nuclear reactors producing <coughs> clean energy and warmongers making bombs. I, I, it's a complicated and again, issue. when we look at the fossil fuel industry, yeah, I mean, uh, transportation, uh, just there's so much that's involved with it. But Automobiles running on gasoline all over the place. But yeah. what we need to do is just get beyond that yeah. and, and realize that we cannot continue to keep pumping carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. Yeah, but the it, oceans are acidifying. Mm -hmm. We've got disasters like Fukushima, Chernobyl, Three Mile Island. Um, we've got uh, nuclear things sitting on fault lines. I mean, look at Indian Point, just 25 miles from us. How could you evacuate New York City if there was a disaster? Is it possible for nuclear energy to be used peacefully? Yes. And is it possible for nuclear energy to be used? You're going to, to need it when you go to the stars. Crisis? When you go to the stars and you got starships. And if it is, why is it not being done? If it is uh, non-polluting. Okay, here's the is economics. Okay. Okay. Of, uh, no, nothing to do with that. No. It has to do with vested interest. Yeah, okay. Right, vested right. interest is this. Lot of things the amount of money energy. that's involved in the oil industry and the coal and the bonk and the donk uh, Thank you. is staggering. It's trillions. Yeah, it is and true. Yeah. People yeah. who are in the business with the infrastructure 
they don't want to change. Even if you wave clean energy up their nose, they're not going to peacefully get rid of things that are making them into multi-billionaires. That's the problem there's because big, there's some pretty big interest involved in atomic energy. But this the, there are the no oil industry, excuse plants me, the oil industry. Built. Well, that may be there because there are no people, more being built because that it's may too not be dangerous. dangerous. Stop that that may the may oil industry at this point in time. The oil industry maybe. at this point Possibly. in time is probably ninety percent of the energy, we, which also means ninety percent of the business. You have to think about money, all right. Well, they're I guess so if you don't, you're really sort of out of touch with well, what's then, running but the That's system. why you can't okay. be naive and say, let's just have clean energy, right? That's not going to work. No, I, well, you have to look into a transition period. Okay. You have to get the backing of every Tom, Dick, and Harry, every human being. Most people don't want to live in a polluted environment. Mm. They don't. And when well, we they've have got fossil families, fuels they, they want the clean air, they want to breathe this, you know. And not solar and wind. But I mean, these people, these people well, who I was are just asking about atomic energy. Why couldn't atomic energy be used as a source of electricity? I mean, it can, but then you have to get rid of the people in the oil industry, and they're not going to walk. No, the oil industry is different than the no, atomic they don't, energy. No, but you're missing There's my point. There's a competition point. there, Harold. You you're, you're, missing my point. you're missing so my point. You're missing my point. What is the, the point? The point know. is that the big money at this point in time uh -huh. is in oil. Well, that globally, is some pretty big interests are. We go to war totally over it, don't we? We do. Globally, <laughs> noticed. Yeah, I've noticed. You know, them. and they are not going to peacefully relinquish for solar or wind or any clean technology, including nuclear. Well, wait. Well, they're I, not going to uh, do we that. We are also now they, seeing the first. They don't have money, so people are starting to wake up and just say, "You know what? We need to transition. Let's, you know, divest." You think from the Saudis this. have money in nuclear power plants? They don't. They have money in oil reserves, which well, is the have largest. Oil reserves. Right, that's where the valuable, money is. And that's one of the things that's run right. a whole world. You but know, we're already at great a point. Value. Now, phase two. 350.org, we already have mm. too much carbon dioxide in the air. Yeah. If we're going to continue to utilize anything that's still in the ground, we'll be up to 500, and it'll be an Okay, here's another little land. ditty to chew on. Oil is too precious but to burn. But has anybody ever done a coefficiency between the amount of, let's just say we're talking about energy, okay? Right. We energy, all need energy. And... Uh, as I understand it, I, I love that Bucky Fuller, you know, and I think John McConnell was really inspired by him. I mm -hmm. think the, the whole thinking world was inspired by Buckminster Fuller in a major way in which he was a comprehensive thinker, and he thought these things through and everything very carefully and everything. But um, you've got um, enough, uh, the, the major store of energy uh, on a destructive vein is in the tri-dense submarine fleets of the United States of America that have enough energy that could heat the world uh, 10 times over, clean possibly. I told you, uh, the seven them on the bottom. And why don't we think about uh, using the energy from the atomic submarines, which has got enough to take care of the whole world electric needs. Do you mean the seven pollution. on the bottom? The seven on the bottom? I told you that sunk. Yeah. Well, the, the, I, no, that's not the point. The point <laughs> is that the energy store of the weapons of mass destruction are in the United States of American fleet. In Russia. And it's never brought up that we could get those as a source of clean energy. I mean, if that's a possibility, I think it'd be good to have a chart where it goes from the submarine into the energy feeding the whole world. There was one last thing. Not but to get we off don't want oil. to do that because we want to associate <laughs> en elect that with the bad guys, the oil guys. But they could be in competition. But okay. why don't we go for a future that is livable? There's well, I we didn't. Want. I think it would do be we, pretty livable. Look at the fires in California. <laughs> they have enough the energy in those These submarines. These are all climate change. The energy in the submarines is something that could be tapped for good purpose. You can tap the energy that's in the. It's submarines. a very complicated issue. Okay. Do you know that cow farts? Cow farts <laughs> are part of the problem, right? <laughs> and turbines. Meat. Who's Carl Fox? Cow, cow farts. farts. Methane. Methane. Oh, methane. Right. Oh, methane. Well, well now, that brings up a point, too. With the, yeah, with okay. the ice so, caps melting, more yeah. methane is being released. <laughs> that's true. And that is right. so that's much worse okay. than carbon dioxide. Absolutely. Absolute. Couldn't so, agree with you But more. there's a yeah. whole movement now yeah. to get off meat. Now, yeah. this is where hemp comes in. You can make hamburgers out of hemp. Now, at the same time, you don't have, if you want to read your New York Times, I'm, I'm doing an analysis on this, how many trees had to be cut down to make the New York Times? 
you can make the New York Times with hemp. Well, hemp is a good thing, I think. Hemp's hemp a terrific food, thing. Fuel, it, it's medicine, a, it's clothing. a thing they made cordage out but of. You've got, but you've got a brain dead, <coughs> brain dead society, a war on drugs, and you mentioned the word help. Oh, marijuana, the children are going to get it, and they're going to start taking heroin, you know. Really nonsense shit yeah. going Gateway on. Drugs. There's a lot of that they makes call no sense. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I'm saying, oil is too precious to burn. Um, there's yeah. many things you do you use in medicine. You'd be surprised how much you do with oil, other than burning it. You but know, it, but in yeah, fact, yeah, hemp yeah, oil, there's a lot of hemp things, oil you know, could be plastics. used for all the replacements. Hemp would really help solve our problem, well, and I, we'd have to decriminalize it, legalize it. Well, isn't um, that, didn't they do that? Didn't they make it legal and everything like that? I mean, it seems to me it's sort of silly. Some of it. The, some the, countries, the, the, the some places. Was well, sort of silly. put it this way. The U.S. government has the patent on the medical, the healthful parts right. of it. Yeah, so what system, does that tell you? The system is favoring <laughs> a few people who own all the political That's hemp clubs. oil. Yeah, yeah. Hemp oil is yeah. good. It yeah. can, it's but back again to 1970, and the people who were talking about something major going on in terms of evolution, there was something about 1970 that Bucky Fuller made, made uh, note of, and he thought we were at that time. I, I just summarize it, and it's a little hard to do and everything, but he did it with the World Design Decade, 1965-75, the work down mm -hmm. at Southern Illinois University where the best minds were there, uh, uh, taking a look at things comprehensively. And he took a large bite out of things that uh, have been accepted by a lot of people of some thought, and he took and he said that we were, um, over time, we were increasing the number of people in the world through technological development who could be seen to be a have as opposed to a have not. I don't know how we how do we, how do we quantify what it means to be a have. There are certain things that you can just sort of j identify, like say, that nice to have a nice clean place where you can sleep and uh, have food and all the kinds of material things that uh, is there. But the capability to provide that within a context of our ability of, of uh, technological development to provide it and so forth, or the capability of doing it ecologically, uh, the, that we were growing the percentage of the world population that could be seen to be a have as opposed to a have not, was growing exponentially in the 20th century. And we crossed, in terms of the world population, projected into the future, the point where there was enough that more than 50% of the world population was able to be seen to be haves in terms of our capability to provide life support to the people of the world in glowing population terms and going on into the future. And he said we crossed that line about 1950. Hmm. I mean, 1970. 1970 was the year that that transformation was taking place in terms of our collective capability of providing life support within an ecological Fuller context. Fuller was part the of the Earth of the Society. Do you Did think you there's know anything that? to be said for that large ontologic understanding of uh, reality and universe? Or is that just whistling Dixie or something? Well, it's or too is there complicated to a bloody of? question. But it's not so but, complicated, but he really. Was, he was we were transcending scarcity. Fuller was part of the Earth Society in the beginning. Yes, Did indeed. You know he was one of the good. Yeah, yeah, he and McConnell yeah. got along really very well. And Margaret, yeah. Margaret Mead, Mead was And all a big these supporter. other good people, yeah. Right, so we and had world thought, leaders. Yeah, and that was a thought that Now, you keep saying 1970, 1970. Yeah, that reminds me of Helen Garland, who... Wasn't there a Stockholm conference in 1970? In 1970, in Stockholm? the Environmental Conference. There was, was that where, where, major where was it in Europe? In Stockholm. in Stockholm. In Good. Sweden. Sweden. Well, and that was yeah. the first, you know, supposed to be the major um, Yeah, okay. A, a turning point, you mm -hmm. know, about the environment and its issues and things. So do you think we were, what about this proposition that we may have been going through a major qualitative transformation at the level of providing life support for the human society? Within an ecological condition, and that we were we were crossing a major line of transformation from historical context of inadequacy or inability to provide. If you want to go back to the 17th century, there was no way you could have provided what we call a, a standard of living worthy of calling it a haveness. We just didn't have the capability to do it out at any time in history. I but think you're right. No, no. Then. I think you're right. And there. if it is, why pivotal points Thank like you. the Industrial Revolution, right? Yeah, well, that's usually that was a pivotal point in history of humanity. Yeah, the technological 
revolution in Getting into steam science. engine, yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. no, the first, the industrial revolution was steam, the yeah. steam engine yeah. and all of that in <coughs> manufacture. I'm just reading a book about the Luddites. Yeah, yeah, D King Ludd, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But th th those pivotal points usually have to do with production and making things and doing things and yeah. science and invention and right, so and so. Right. I don't think there's like one pivotal point like 1970. It's kind of a period, you know, like maybe well, a generation and, and then a period of development or degradation of the planet, depending how you look at it. Uh -huh. uh, and, and the last one obviously is this whole computer uh, technological yeah. switch is like changing yeah. Uh, society. Well, that is. We want to talk about in the second program we're going to do with you all what the mm -hmm. implications are from that perspective in terms of into the future because it has amazing uh, potentialities for changing things and everything. But the idea, is it impossible that there could ever be enough for all to where you get past, do you understand zero sum? For mm -hmm. one, if it's zero sum, if one to wins, if one to win or get an advantage, the other has to lose. It's win. like you, if you have to win the war, or you have to win the election, or you have to win, and you win, then you win, and, and they're the That's winners. That's sort only of because there's greed. R well, yeah, but there's been greed necessarily. Yeah, I know, but greed, greed is the reason. You know, greed is the reason that the, the haves and the have-nots, it's all bullshit. There's enough for everybody. No, they're never ha Well, they're... Uh, there is everything that's capable of feeding everybody and everybody having respect, a good time. With, uh, with serious consideration... Money is bullshit. Well, it's nonsense. It's very important to most people. Well, of course, it's important. It's very important that the people have got it. Yeah, but and it's and very important the people who don't have it. Well, then it, <laughs> in in those terms, John, you got the people who have it, and you got the people who right. don't have it. The whole that system sucks. Most, that takes up practically all of humanity. It's and a dumbass right. system. That's the most important thing that motivates all it's of It's an human awful society. system. It's well, just accruing right, wealth is ridiculous. Well, it, yeah, well, if yeah. you yeah. Do you ever watch Star Wars in the future? You see anybody spending Star Trek. Star Trek. You see anybody Nobody's spending, got money. Nobody's got money. <laughs> it's not, Nobody's it's just not doing things anymore. together. You don't need money. Money's money's Basically, yeah, just we to sustain empires. And well, we were talking about the reality now in 2012. I understand that, but well, I'll go and back. the major thing that support the major. Presumably, thing we're having this conversation. No, the most important thing in how human affect society. The future. No, the most important thing that mo that motivates human uh, society is money. Now is money. That money, right? Wait, it's right. the god. Aristotle money is the god. Said, Aristotle, Hail to the is, great money. What is the most important <laughs> thing? Now you're just Wait, making light did, of it. But what did Aristotle no, I'm not making light of it. Well, it it's a fact. <laughs> yeah. well, what did Aristotle say? Money is say? worshipped. Yeah. Wait, well, she's got something. What did Aristotle say? Aristotle said he doesn't vote as an idiot. No, he well, said the right. most important thing is your health. Well, yeah, the most important thing is your so health. So money That's doesn't matter if you don't right. have your health. What about mother love? It doesn't mother matter. If you're dying of cancer, really it don't matter shit. You know, I mean, and, uh, uh, listen, teddy bear Aristotle and, and, was a really cool dude. Okay? He was indeed. He had a couple and of good And he had a lot of good ideas. And yes. one of them was, when asked in the Lyceum, Master, what is the most important thing in life? What did his, he say? He said, what? health. 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 That's the most well, important that's thing. A biggie. And that is first life. and <laughs> foremost, health. <laughs> Without <laughs> health, it doesn't matter if you got a billion dollars or a zillion dollars. Yeah, that's right. You if you don't have health, have you, you, know you got nothing. About. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Now well, that was the okay. guy who said that a thousand years ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> but anyway, I think it's probably always been the material reality has been really most important. Most of the time we were wondering, we're here 200,000 years, the species. Most of that time, we were wandering around in the wilderness, living on carrion or something, or being eaten by cats that would take us down with alarming regularity. They I beg your factors. pardon. I was a hunter and gatherer. I wasn't being et. I was eaten. <laughs> well, that's and I was one that did the eaten and well, the killing. That's one. Nobody was eating me. I, I mean, I don't know where you come from. In Scotland, we ate them. Well, they need us. Well, I got a little Scottish blood in me too, and I know about kilts and things like that. And you know, uh, you know, and I. And, and we were hunters and it. gatherers. And Actually, mm. this just brings up another thought. Scotland yeah. this year and yeah. this summer went completely. All their energy was provided by wind energy. Yeah. Uh, and really? You know, yes. Scotland's doing good, man. Right. Uh, oh, and by the way, Scotland. How, how did they do Two that? men, two Scotsmen in Edinburgh, yeah. have just bought time in the Hubble telescope, and they're very close to pinpointing the point of the Big Bang. 
the point of it? You mean Where the, it started the origin, the back, actual the origin wow. of the Big Bang. Wow. Which Wouldn't is really interesting. You know, Scotsman invented everything. You know years. that, right? Yeah, that's way back. <laughs> yeah, that's very, that was amazing. See, <laughs> we didn't know that it took Einstein to come. That all had to be, that all had to be worked out and everything. And they got, they got the W map now where they can get a picture of that. Amazing. The, the, the technology, it's, all, it's, it is it's awesome. All, it's all, the knowledge base and the understanding is picking up exponentially. It's not growing just uh, arithmetically. 10,000 generations, and this may be the defining generation in evolutionary Yeah, but there's only half of 1% of in. anybody knows anything that's going on. Most of the bloody world is thick as a brick, especially in America. It's an absolutely moronic state of intelligence well, a with lot the of masses. They're thick as a brick. All they want is to consume and buy and get more shit. Well, it's a incredible. Lot of it, there's a lot of insecurity because the system but is it's not, not in insecurity, order. they're stupid. Well, I lack of education. I don't. Well, they can't even read or speak. Yeah. Well, I. They couldn't I, conjugate a verb. They can't. They, they can't do anything. <laughs> do you ever watch the bloody television? And, and you know, hey, there's I some like television. Myself, I do too. There's some great programs, yeah. mm -hmm. but you watch most of it. Just try scanning the advertisements for a while. It's moronic. They How many drug companies uh, sell it's sell you stuff? They know, and ask your they doctor, know what you know, sells boom, aspirin. Boom, boom. A pretty smile. Well, they know. That's what they do. Short skirt. So sell, sell, sell. They sell. know all that stuff, and they can play it like like puppet masters. They can do it, and they I do know. it because. Uh, they know how to do it. They're Mary smart. has an expression. Okay. What is it about American intelligence? Well, the dumbing down of America. I just <laughs> think our media has been consolidated into fewer and fewer entities. Where do we get our news? It used to be, you know, well, read the NBC, newspaper. Yeah, yeah but... It, if you want to get the news, you have to, you have to at you least have to watch, watch five. Show on we M watch <laughs> French television, Russian television, the BBC. The only American thing is CNN that's worth anything. Well, Fox, you can stick it up your nose. Well, you're, like, you're, you're, you're politically oriented. Well, no, I'm just talking about... A I want, lot of people like Fox. There's I want the news. Yeah. Yeah, because, if, yeah. if you wanted to find Because they like out Trump. What? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people who do, yeah. If they you, love Trump. If you yeah, want to find people, out yeah. some of the things that are he's happening... Lying he's lying son of a bitch. He's a savior. Why are you squeezing me? Things right, yeah. I just said, if you wanted to ha watch things that are happening at the UN, there's a web TV. It's there called yeah. webtv.un.org. Yeah, what's and you going can, on? And there's a well, UN TV all channel. All conferences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when they did, the, you know, the, this summer we did the big Oceans Conference. Okay. And and idea, the idea is that, you know, the UN was set up to be... A forum where we, every, there was a seat at the table for all of us. Yeah. And right now, what is happening is it's called the 17 Sustainable Development yeah. Goals. Yeah. Talk okay. about that. Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Well. Th yeah. Good. Go okay. Ahead. So yeah, United Nations should be supported. Thank There's you. No doubt about and, that. And we everybody do. should have a seat at the table. Yes. Yeah, and right. instead of having Absolutely. a Security Council where one can veto it, we need to re reform that. But let me just tell you what the yeah. 17 okay. goals are. Please do. By uh, all means. No yes. poverty. No hunger. Well, that's great. Good health. This is ideal. Quality yeah. education. Yeah. Gender equality. Uh -huh. Clean water and sanitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clean energy. Good jobs and economic growth. Innovations and infrastructure. Reduced inequalities. Sustainable cities and communities. Responsible consumption. Protect the planet. Life below water. Life on land. Peace and justice and partnership on these goals. That's all very idealistic and yes. very good. Yeah, it is. Would and say, this is right? what we're working That's towards. That's what we would like, yeah. Now, how are we going to get to it? Well, a lot of people are working on it, Harold. A lot of people globally are working on it. shows yeah. what they're going to do on each of these issues. Uh -huh. and, and these are not just words. There are things actually happening. Okay. What's there, some of the work that they're, I don't know. I, well, the Oceans Conference was number 14, uh -huh. Life Below Water. Yeah. And, and the, we realized that we are dependent on the oceans for our food, yeah, like how well, many yeah, people depend sure. on it for fish? And out of and it came the solutions to pollutions, including micro plastics from your toothpaste and everything you flush well, down the, the toilet. Things are now being I added. Nanoparticles. There's all kinds of we really. Just, we really have to be careful how much stuff and junk and plastic. The focus we're is on solutions. Ocean. Well, okay, yeah, okay. right, yeah, okay. And, and so it's not just talk and words. That it's, this is followed up by action. 
Are and we making progress? Yes. Yes, we are. Absolutely. You believe in progress? Yes. Absolutely. Poverty is being reduced. I Poverty understand that. Absolutely. Poverty is being reduced? And, when and despite the fact it's all being run by a bunch of bandits? Well, the again, bandits are there's sort more of, of us than right. there are of them. It, there's the people, power of the don't people. Don't we give any credit to it? Let's see. When I, was, <laughs> when I was young, I was born in Detroit, right? Hmm. And I was born in 35. So I'm 82, right? So I've been around quite a little while. All right. But my uh, my father was a lawyer, but my grandmother was a um, she she uh, Sprunk Lu Lucy Lucy Sprunk Channer, okay. and she when she was when she was she was the first woman. Oh, did you did I say it already on this program? But the first l word that came yeah, out, yeah, feminism. Did I say that already? You did. I did. Feminism. And That's really coming to the fore. But anyway, it's probably been throughout most of that time, it's been a condition of whoever had the biggest club hit everybody on the head. And then they took over, and they were the chief, and they had the power and pow pow real politique. Whoever's got the gun rules. That's the way things have been. But anyway, she was a uh, woman, and, oh, uh, and she was the first woman ever to graduate from the University of Michigan Medical College. 1888, she broke the glass ceiling. We've got a whole half of society that haven't been able to realize their full potential, and I think feminism's coming on like gangbusters now, don't you? Something uh, like that? It's a balancing and a rebalancing, but we need women's voices. Anyway, the point being is that in, to be heard. It, it, and in the family lore and everything, she lived on 16th Street, that's in Detroit, and it, it, when he was eight years old, Mr. Ford used to tinker in their garage. That's wild. Before he could know how to <laughs> build cars. But then he went and he built a big factory, made a whole bunch of cars, and they put a lot of cement down, and they got highways, and they had an automobile. Was that progress, or was that not? Should we still be riding around with cars? It's Horses? a good, no, no. I think no, no. Ford Wait, no, no, it's a good question. It's and a the good, people who have made, good. the industrial leaders who have gone out <laughs> and made the decision, taken a chance, invested and done some good and built up the progress that we have realized, shouldn't we give some credit to that rather than just berating them for having done all the things of the Industrial Revolution that are all around us? Shouldn't well, we give a little credit to people who helped build the environment the things, that makes life a little bit better for so many other one people? One of the things Ford did was made sure that those cars were affordable to the people. That's right. And so... Five dollars a day. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. No, I'm trying to say maybe we should be a little bit easy on the people who were some of the industrial leaders who did a great deal of good for improving the U. How would you like to live without electricity? I hope we don't have to. Well, I know, but uh, you understand what I'm saying is we sit here and complain, we but depend think of how the energy. life is improved. It's not so it's hard. It's not so hard. I mean, I've, I've sailed around the bloody world without yes. electricity. Oh, but you, you <laughs> John, that, uh, you're, you're, you're not the average American citizen. You got that right. No, right. Well, you're not. You got, and I'm not an American citizen. You're not even a, you're still Scottish. He's an alien. Yeah. I am not British. an American yeah. citizen. You're not American. What are you? What are you? Uh, I'm British. British. Oh, you're yeah. British. Well, I'm British background. We're yeah. all British. I'm not background. I'm, I'm British. I'm I have a British wasp. passport. I have to but admit I, it. But, but I think one of the <laughs> things is cooperation is what okay. will help us get through this. And, uh, and I'm reading a book right now by uh, Rebecca de Costa and she talks about can we think our way out of this evolutionary I'm all for that, that I'm all and for that what she yeah. says is that instead of having you know this like uh, people in their oh, silo thinking and and wrong well like just falling back on belief systems instead of insight uh -huh. and she is very hopeful that we will be able to pull this off well but, good can but, you send me a link or to, sure. anybody who you think is really relevant and everything can send me a link because i'm yeah, interested because in that we kind of do thing. need to have a future that is livable and that you know we want our children to grow up to you know not be so worried and, and anxious you know well you think they always have been uh, no, I guess, no. First of all, I when I grew up in the fifties, no. <laughs> yeah, but you were young in the fifties. When you're young, you're very, very free, care, free, carefree, and all that sort of thing. But then along comes the later years, and then everybody uh, passes. So that's something that is I, a thing that is there that is uh, fearful and sort of a disquieting you know, thing we for grew a lot up, of people. We we worked hard. We were we, you know we were farm workers. You know, milking cows, but just being outside a lot, imprinting on clouds. I'm afraid of cows. They're big. <laughs> they're very very big. You drink big. milk, you said. I know, but I don't like to get near a cow because they're very big. 
Try a bull. And you were the one with, with the bears in Alaska I, I, for to hear your I story. I got stuck in from Alaska, I tell you. I did. And the black bears, well, they were, I mean, brown bears, Alaska. Alaska bears brown, scare me. They I will, admit. They will attack and kill you. And they're bears black. Bears brown. Uh, and that's been the lot I submit for a I lot of I have high regard for bears. Bears They got scary. brought down regularly by leopards and lions that ate them with I don't like leopards like and rabbit. lions either. Well, anyway, it's not I don't like sharks. But to go back to this anxiety thing. Yeah. Uh, the first five years of my life, uh, it's, uh, huh. the world was at war, and like I wasn't yeah. anxious. It was fun. Yeah. It's yeah. like, and, and the reason kid, it was yeah, fun yeah, because yeah. the adults were busy, you know, making bombs or going off fighting and so yeah. so, and we had total freedom, and we had a great time, you know. Yeah. From two to five, I just hung out with my pals and had a great time. And Can there was I, no anxiety, even though we, even though we were well, getting yeah, bombed. Used his, used we didn't get. We didn't. Can yeah. I just it's bring this up? What do we do today with yeah. child soldiers? We have a whole generation of children that's, that's who are who are victims of war, but they are now in, you know. Right. I couldn't wait really to grow up and become a soldier and kill Germans. Planet. That's what I wanted to do. If so we <laughs> got to a point where something that has never been available to us is now becoming available to us in a way. Uh, that uh, we ought to take note of and so forth? Or are we at a time of qualitative transformation, do you think, or something? Uh, maybe. And did this 1970 have any meaning? It seemed to have meaning that's been picked up by... You're a, fixed on 1970 it, Yeah, yeah I think reason. a lot of people who think comprehensively are. John McConnell was. What, what, M M M Margaret Mead. A whole lot of other physicists were. They were discovering things, and there's a, a, a summation of many people's thinking that that was a major year of transformation. It ought to be brought up in some sort of order rather than just thought of just another year. It was an anniversary. It was a time, an anniversary to be celebrated or be to, to be uh, thinking about a moment of transformation or thinking about qualitative transformation that is characteristic of the time in which we live. Rather than just arguing, let's be good. You know? Um, All I can say is uh, I'm glad to be talking to somebody that's three years older than me. Mm. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm still around to be three <laughs> years older than you rather than the alternative, <laughs> if you don't mind me saying that. Very so. good, yeah. very good. Yeah. This is actually a very nice picture. Oh, this yeah, is, by um, all means. Can we hold it up? Can you get a, this is, can you um, come in, honey? Uh, this is the first up? time yeah, the Children's comes. Peace Bell yeah, was rung. This is um, that's the Peace Bell, yeah. At the these UN. Are the Where is it? UN. Yeah. These are the children from Eunice. Yeah, hold up some of these pictures. Good. McConnell, the, there you got a great. The United picture. Nations International School, and uh, these are the children that first rang this Peace Bell. Now the interesting thing is that the bell was cast from pennies collected by children from around the world. Wonderful. That's inspirational. Uh, in That's the great. Takeda workshop in Tokyo. Okay, show us some more pictures. They're really good. Right. Um, We're in multimedia. So we can show find pictures. John McConnell here. Yeah. Here yeah, is at the UN. This is the man himself who started Earth Day, a yes. major figure, an intellectual person that we should all pay attention to. Oh, that's to. one of my photographs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that good. your photo? Yeah. I yeah. took all this stuff. Good for you. Well, and let's you. just yeah, do this one to this. the man who yeah. started Earth Day. Yeah. <laughs> this is John McConnell. Earth Day is a celebration of that that has now become mm -hmm. a major institutional thing to be supported. Show by the one that you thought, which is good. Yeah, you got you uh, thought? I think it was in here you It's had in it. there, yeah. 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 Which is, that was the first time it was run. Go ahead, get it. Yeah, show sure that. Yeah, this is the first time it was, and this was, it was the quote I was saying before was, uh, may, th may there only be peace and cheerful Earth days to come for our beautiful spaceship Earth as it continues to spin and circle in frigid space with its warm and fragile cargo of animate life. Who see, who's who That's you thought, you Secretary thought. General in yeah. 1971. Yeah. When yeah, that was something worth contemplating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. just a little, uh, okay. a little place of First energy Secretary being General in collected in a, I uh, will show you now Pete Seeger. Universe. Yeah. Pete Seeger ring, the Peace Bell. This was in uh, oh, yeah. 2009. Pete Seeger is a great guy. Yep. What's yeah, that he's boat? He's a cool guy. The, 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 the Clearwater. Yeah, Clearwater's yep, great. Yeah, I've been in, up and down the river a couple here's, times. Here's one yeah. with uh, our peace cranes at oh, the Oh, we end. had all the uh -huh. kids make origami uh, 
and you know it's for peace okay yeah. that's great yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. another mcconnell isn't it sure. is that the one you've had uh, that's the one i had and yeah. you know each year um we've had the u.n singers um help or us is that a group of new yorkers or these no, are it's UN, un staff yeah, staff, staff yes, the UN. yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and here we had uh eunice children the united nations international school i sent my daughter to eunice yeah, yeah. these were Youngster, these are yeah, yeah. Is so that down on 23rd Street or something? Yeah. It's very close to there, yeah, yes, right, on the right, East River. Right, right, sure, right, right, sure. right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I will give you a f show you our flyer for next year. Um, okay. Show again, it. for 12-15, for yeah. uh, March 20 is on a Tuesday. Uh, uh -huh. New York time is 12-15. But uh -huh. wherever you are on the planet, there's a, a specific time frame. Uh -huh. So, uh, for instance, in New Zealand, it's on March 21. Okay, yeah. And that will be at 5.15 yeah. in the morning. Yeah, right. So we have a group in New Zealand. So that, all that around the world, people link moment. together. They yes. Play, they share. That that's is a right. really For that's peace, a, justice, right. really and care of Earth. There's no, one who ju who, there's no one who has a thing like that for war and destruction and a rampant uh, 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 arrogance or something. Yeah. Nobody's, uh, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's taking care of the devil and the details of all this. Yeah, right. But okay, that's beautiful. You got all that stuff. It's yeah, such a beautiful thing. Yeah, 48 years of doing it. <coughs> and, you know, it's usually a small ceremony, like a one hour. Yeah. But, but other people meditate or light candles or, you know, go. Um, Kevin I, Saunders used to come and Kevin was appreciate our often on yes. this. Sure, had sure. To yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Nice guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. really good. He was a great friend of uh, Richie Haven. Yes. Richie Havens was a great, and most all of the real artists and the people who are really there sign on to this. I think that uh, it's very few people who would not be able to uh, summon support for something right. like that. And it's a great thing, a, 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 a candle in an otherwise right. uh, and drab world. You one know. of the things that we've over the years tried to do is to highlight what we call Earth trustees. So like individuals right. or groups who are actually making a difference to to make it a better planet. Individuals, know. corporations. Are they celebrated in any systematic way? Um, right? We have a Nobel Well, we Peace have an award Prize ceremony. Giving, you know, that's something that's right. recognizing And again, who, uh, who won this year's Nobel Peace Prize <coughs> was ICANN, the International Coalition to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. They just spoke December 10th at the ceremony in Oslo. Mm -hmm. um, Again, to me, that is an important issue. That yeah. We really need to get rid of weapons <coughs> and have a peaceful, livable future. Absolutely. And for all of us. <coughs> so. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's all good. That's uh, that's the work that's been done. And John McConnell, uh, he he. Um, well, you look at were the flag. Earth flag. You know, it's our unifying symbol. It's. Is that actually a photograph of the Earth that John yes, Glenn it is. somebody took? No, or it, it was it comes Apollo from NASA. 13 was the Apollo first 13. one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we got it from NASA. Uh, it was the first shot. That was an amazing thing, wasn't it? Yeah. We got to the moon. <coughs> changed, changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? We're going to move out into space? Or what, what is your thought about I think about it's inevitable. What do you try to We're already in space. Yeah, right. We are. We're like a spaceship. <laughs> what that about Voyager? Still going, still going, That's and true. still sending that back That is a true. <laughs> that is true, isn't it? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <coughs> we got Arthur C. Clarke with geosynchronous orbit. Uh, yeah, all of that, and and yeah. in the understanding of things, and the and the evolving of things. Um, are you are you opt are you more or less op we've both got a couple of years all three of us have a few years my I more than you and all but are you are you optimistic for the human prospect or do you sometimes get a little bit uh, uh, <coughs> a sense that uh, it's like I think the humans it's just gonna go down I it's think go no. down the I drain. think if they change their bloody <coughs> evil ways uh, the mess can be cleaned up if they don't definitely heading for the sixth extinction. It's just a question Talk of the will. Talk about that. What, what are you talking sixth extinction? Well, there have been five major extinctions. Ta do you happen to know very well what you're talking about? You I know very well what I'm talking about. Talk about it. It's worthwhile. No, I don't want to go into the details. <coughs> extinction is extinction. It's forever. All right? Well, we know 65 million years ago when now, all the dinosaurs were wiped out. Yeah, that's that one of the that's one of them. But that was not man-made. Yeah, right. That was a comet that hit the Yucatan Peninsula right. and created a global winter. Okay, uh, yeah. that, that there are natural phenomena that cause extinctions. If that hadn't happened, we wouldn't have emerged. Of course not. Now, we, we, <laughs> but, but, but so what? It doesn't matter. It's yeah. irrelevant. But the <laughs> point is, <coughs> we're already in an the sixth extinction, the, the rate of uh, 
the demise of species each year is staggering. It's like it's beyond the bloody pale. Um, Do you I, have quantitative I, I, figures that you can... Uh, no, I don't want to go into that. No. Yeah, okay, okay, no, that's okay. I, I just, I'll just give you an example. The, the pattern is what you're presenting. Okay. Carol, it's with, there. With climate right. change, yeah. we now know that, okay, let's say butterflies, insects are, are, that's changing like three weeks earlier, the plants are blooming, and the insects no, no. didn't get there on time but, yet. Okay, These things okay, lead okay, to but that's, extinction. If yeah, you get into details, niches. you get bogged down. Yeah. Basically, okay, yeah. the mm -hmm. situation, the sixth extinction yeah. is upon us, uh -huh. and it is irrefutably by the best minds on the planet uh -huh. produced by mankind's activities. Now, just let that sit for a second. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last? The was good the news, though, it is not at this point irrevocable. Not it can be stopped, but only by a major global event and a commitment to clean up the mess. Because if we don't, it's really simple. There are certain people who believe it's too late, like, for example, NASA and a lot of really serious people that actually, actually like humanity. And they don't want to see humanity go extinct, so they're building an ark. All right? That, like Noah. <laughs> like well, Noah. Yeah. Save the species. Two now species. Now, this ark, <laughs> they've already, that's they've a already little, built. That's a task. That's a lot what of What they've built is the largest launch systems in the history of rocketry uh -huh. that can take up into geosynchronous orbit yeah. prefabricated components which will be assembled in space okay. to build this enormous Art. spaceship. Wow. It will have a center gravity wheel yeah. so they don't lose their uh, muscles and all this and protect it from bombardment from space, believe it not, by a barrier of water. Now they need the water obviously because if they're going somewhere they're going to have to take water with them. Yeah. But all the radiation stuff that uh, the particles that go through metal and go through it don't go through water, which is fascinating sort of little side detail. They're looking to fuel it either by nuclear energy yeah. <coughs> or by... A lot of energy there. Yeah. Hydrogen? Hydrogen, yes. Which is available Precisely, which space, is all through yeah. the universe. Mm. Or antimatter. Antimatter. <laughs> now, antimatter is really interesting because <laughs> if you had an engine made of antimatter, you could get the moon in seven seconds. Mm. It's really fast. Yeah. Uh, Actually, if you think about it, science now they want to go to Alpha been, you know, Venturi. Science is uh, uh, Alpha Venturi. Venturi yeah. yeah. is the destination. One, one, one of the problems in the universe is that there is time limits on things. And we have a time limit on this program that we have to call a halt to now, but we'll pick it up in a second program if that's all right with you. And teach science. And teach science, okay? <laughs> but we have to do it. We're talking with John McConnell and his lovely wife, Mary John Drysdale, yes. John, John, I'm not John, John McConnell. We're talking John about McConnell's John dead. McConnell. Excuse me, <laughs> I am John not McConnell. dead. <laughs> and in the presence of, mm. uh, of him and, and Mary Carlin. Your pleasure. We're going to have another program that will be following, I guess, tomorrow from views on terms of uh, uh, airing. But that's it for now. We're talking about uh, John McConnell, a great giant, and, and Buckminster Fuller and some of the qualitative mm -hmm. confirmation of uh, where the planet is at this particular time. Thanks for viewing. Uh, tune in tomorrow. We'll be coming back again. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for right. viewing. Thanks. That was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Now, just breathe deep because sure. we're going to we're gonna have to get back and get down to some heavy-duty stuff. So you want to switch positions? No, let's just stay. I think we ought to just stay the same. I, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Whatever. I'm exhausted. I've been no, up 